last days and times. Uh, tonight we have with us the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov Ben Israel. We're going to discuss the new millennium. So we welcome your phone calls once again, 770-559-2999. Elder, welcome to the program. Thank you, my brother. You know, Elder, in the brother's uh, music there, he says, warning, warning, warning. And basically he's... Um, and he said the word says warning, warning, warning. Mm -hmm. And that we're coming up on basically the last days uh, in time. And in light of that, when you think about the new millennium, or many people talking about Y2K, mm -hmm. nothing more than just year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, what, if anything, does the scriptures say about this new millennium? And, and what should we expect? Well, the new millennium is going to it says a lot of things about the new millennium. The new millennium is going to bring about the uh, uh, the salvation of the children of Israel. Uh, it's the end of our four hundred year captivity. Mm -hmm. Yahweh told Abraham in Genesis fifteen thirteen that we'd be in this land for four hundred years. That we served uh, uh, the Europeans and be afflicted by them for four hundred years. And right around the end, uh, well, in the twenty first century, as they called it. Uh, this is when all the prophecies and all the covenants and everything will be fulfilled with the uh, return of the Messiah to redeem uh, the children of Israel out of bondage. Mm. I see a lot of people don't seem to don't seem to understand that it was a period of time mm -hmm. that Yahweh said that we were going to be in this land. Okay. But by us not knowing who we are and not reading the holy story, then we get a whole lot of jibber jabber from people who don't know anything but what it says in the New Testament. Right, right. And everybody, if anybody studies the Bible, they'll find out that the New Testament, you can go in the New Testament and read two verses. Mm -hmm. And go back in the Old Testament and read maybe six, eight verses, uh, chapters out of each prophet that explains those things. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we get uh, in the church today. This is why our people, everybody talking about something's going to happen, but don't nobody know what. It's time for our deliverance. Well, you know, when we talk about our deliverance and uh, redemption and things of that sort, you know, uh, being that we've been in this land for 400 years, mm -hmm. uh, what, I mean, I know we've been looking for equality among the nations. Mm -hmm. You have the civil rights movements and other these uh, movements to try to move us uh, a, a little closer to so-called uh, equal status. Mm -hmm. But in reality, you're saying we need to be redeemed out of this nation so mm -hmm. that uh, our so we can attain to our first estate. Mm -hmm outside of America. Of course, uh, this is what it's all about. See, a lot of people, this one world order that they're talking about, if you read the prophets, the prophets let you know that this one world system is set up for one reason, for Yahweh to destroy the most powerful kingdom that has ever been upon the face of the earth in the process of redeeming his people. Mm -hmm. And with the weaponry that the people have, uh, that the nations have, that we don't have any weapons, you know, we mm -hmm. have, you know, we give up our guns for J uh, Janet Jackson tickets right, and so right, forth and so forth. Right. And besides, you know, Yahweh told us that while you're in your enemy's land, obey the laws of the land so to go well with you. So mm. uh, uh, we, we try to, we try not to think about a violent time that's going to come. Now, you know, last week I read a report that came off the Internet from the uh, Justice Department, and they got us classified as terrorists. Mm. I don't even want a gun. You know, but according to uh, the oracles of the congregation that I belong to, all members must obey federal and uh, uh, state and local uh, uh, laws, you know. But yet and still, we're classified a as terrorists simply because of who we are. Mm. As long as we are alive, we remain a threat to the Europeans simply because what the Europeans have done is this. They have... Uh, put God's people in captivity, and uh, and as long as one of us is alive, as long as one is alive, he has a problem. So this is the reason why the nations today are trying to stamp us out, mm -hmm. so that the word of God would not be made manifest among the nation. Because what the nation practices today has to do with what man talks. Well, you know, in speaking about that report, it's kind of interesting because many of the uh, the the. Um they're looking for the turn of the centuries. A lot mm -hmm. of terrorist organizations mm -hmm. coming on the scene, mm -hmm. trying to wreak havoc. Mm -hmm. Why this lonely, so-called Negro, this lonely Israelite, this lonely uh, colored, 
why be afraid of him? He's been in bondage for 400 years. Well, the reason why they want to destroy us is because who we are. Like like uh, Moses told our people when he brought us out of Egypt, said the Lord your God has chosen you to be a special people to himself above all the people upon the face of the earth. You know, so, and this is what Satan don't want us to know. Mm -hmm. See, Satan's deal is, you read Revelation 12, when Satan gets thrown out of heaven, he goes to make war with who? The people that brought forth the man child that was going to rule all nations. Well, when you look at our people uh, for the past 2,000 years, somebody has been making war with us because we're not a nation anymore. Mm -hmm. we are called, we're not called by our tribal names anymore. We're not called by our national name anymore. And uh, uh, what has happened is the whole memory of our mm. people has been caused to cease from among men, just like the prophets say, simply because what happened was the Europeans just didn't write nothing in the history books about, about us simply because we were not, a vi we haven't been a viable nation since 70 AD. Well, you know, many people at the turn of the century have been hearing about brownouts, blackouts, uh, many uh, catastrophes as far as this. Uh, the, the electrical systems mm -hmm. and some of the major systems in, that are in place. But uh, does the scripture in any way allude to any of that stuff? Not in the year 2000, I'll put it that way. The, the, the things that the scripture alludes to, the, the catastrophes that's going to come up on the earth are written in Revelations um, 8 in Revelation 16 chapter. This is when uh, the creator of all things start to pour his wrath upon the earth with the blowing of the trumpets and the, and the pouring out of the vials of, uh, of wrath uh, uh, upon the earth. But it's a reason for that. The reason for it is to purge us out to make us whiter than snow. Because what he's going to be doing, see, he's going to be tearing up the nations. Mm -hmm. uh, like Psalms 2 said, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain, a vain thing? The kings of the earth and the rulers together have set themselves in array against Yahweh and his anointed, mm -hmm. saying, Let us bust their bands asunder and cast the cause from among us. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, let, let's analyze that. Now, when, we, when you ask somebody what's to create his name, what did they tell you? Lord. God, those are titles. Mm -hmm. They don't know his name, so he has caused his name to cease from among men simply because we are in captivity. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the nations say they're going to cast their cause from among us. There are no national groups that we have today. Like, I remember back during the Civil Rights Movement, man, we had CORE, SNCC, you name it, we had groups. Well, what happened was, uh, during, right at the end of that Civil Rights Movement, they busted all those bands up. Okay. And then when they elected Ronald Reagan, and he came in and started taking away a lot of social programs that, that the federal government had uh, put in place just for our, our use, you see. And uh, so what they're doing is they're actually fulfilling prophecy, but what they're doing on the spiritual level is making, my God, angrier and angrier because of the way that the nations are treating us. You know, you spoke about some of those uh, groups of the 60s, SNCC, and some of those mm -hmm. organizations, and there was a... This, this national front that was put forth. Mm -hmm. There are many Israelite groups around the country, and uh, but there's no unifying thing other than which is which is something they, that they know that they are Israel. Mm -hmm. How is is there any way, or, or is there any possibility of these organizations being united on a on a national front? Uh, um, despite the fact that they do have some particular differences, no. We won't be united uh, simply because the prophets say that we won't be united. I mean, brothers have tried uh, from the days of Garvey. We've tried to come together and unite as a, uh, put, um, put in a national front. But see, what we don't understand is this. Governments deal with governments. Governments is not going to deal with any groups of people. God so, says there's the black man's government. Right, black. right. You see, so until we come together as a governmental system, and that means our own land, our own kings, right. our own rules and regulation that was given to us at the hand of, uh, of the angels of God. You see, once we get that set in place, then the nation is going to have to deal with us. But until we get that in place, what well, we have to do against his brother, right? <laughs> and we have to eat, take the crumbs that fall from master's table because the curses have to be lived out. Right. The whole period of time that the curses was put on our people has to be lived out, and and the curses won't be over until America is destroyed and we get out into the wilderness. In, in 
thinking about the last days, I know you, you on previous occasions, you've uh, distinguished between the latter days mm -hmm. and the last days. Mm -hmm. Does the new millennium represent latter days, last days? How do you see that? Well, the new millennium is going to be uh, the last part of the latter days okay. and the beginning of the, uh, of the last days. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to come about in the, in, in the year 2000. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, but during the, uh, during the earlier part of the, uh, of, of the 21st century, that's when we're going to go out of what is called the latter days. The latter days started when the Messiah showed okay. up. Okay. So we lived the latter days for 2,000 years, and then uh, we go into the period of time when the Messiah uh, uh, was set up his thing uh, during the latter days. Let me read a piece of scripture to you about uh, these uh, 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 the last days, mm -hmm. and, 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 uh, and then maybe we can get some understanding. This is in uh, the book of Micah. Micah chapter 4. Mm -hmm. It says, But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahweh shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the house of Yahweh, to the house of the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he will teach us of his ways. Now, the reason why the nations have to be taught of Yahweh's uh, ways is simply because the church tells you we don't have to do that. So naturally, mm -hmm. they don't know the 613 laws, statutes, and judgments, mm -hmm. so they have to be taught that. There's a story in the Bible where, uh, where some people conquered our, our people, and uh, they was in the land, and the Lord set lions them up upon them. Mm -hmm. So what they had to do was, uh, the king said, well, look, you go get one of their priests and bring their pre priest down here so he can teach y'all how to live in this right, land. Right. Uh, uh, so that's what happened. And this is basically what's going to happen. Of course, they worship their own gods anyway. Sure, sure. They just put y'all on top right. of them and rest the rest of them. But this is basically what's going to take place uh, uh, before the earth can have any peace. And man has always talked about peace. Mm -hmm. But man don't want the peace. And to show you man don't want any mm -hmm. peace, man, 365 days of the year, they got gladiators on TV going at each other, right? <laughs> right. And there's no peace there. Right. See, the man has, the Europeans have a warring nature. You can go back and check history, uh, their history. Look at the Crusades. The bloodiest time that it ever was. The Crusades, they fought wars all over Europe and uh, Africa and Asia. Then they came over here, found this country a peaceful people. People helped them, right? Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving turkey and all that stuff, right? And then they closed the door and shut them out the fort. They mm -hmm. played open war on, 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 the, on the people of this country. They took that, right? Then they got them some slaves, right? Mm -hmm. now, 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 let's go a little further than that. They fought the Asians. Mm -hmm. They fought the Africans. They fought the Arabs. And when they couldn't have nobody else to fight, they fought each other. Mm -hmm. You see, simply because uh, of, uh, of, of the warring nature of the people that we're in, so they're going to have to uh, 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 be taught the ways. That's why it says, and we will walk in his path. Mm -hmm. For the law shall go forth from Judah and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. See, uh, the Messiah is coming to set up a government uh, system on the earth so that man can be taught how to live in mm -hmm. peace because man has never lived in right. peace. Right. And uh, the earth hasn't had any peace since Adam was kicked out of God, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Messiah is coming to set up a governmental system to show man how to live in peace. And then once that takes place, every man is to live on his own vine and every man on his own feet. We, we, speaking of Adam, we talked about a uh, show last week from Adam to Noah. Mm -hmm. And do you see pretty much uh, some of the same conditions of the, of the earth today as it was during the day, say, for instance, of Noah? Well, I see some of the same conditions as of, was of, of the day of Nimrod. Nimrod, uh, he wanted to build a tower to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, so they, they could make them a name, okay. right? Okay. But look at man today. Man is is forcing his way all up into God's heaven, right? Got shuttle crafts, yeah. uh, hover te telescopes and everything, right? Going off into space. And if you, and I, this is this is what I found very, very interesting. When we get when when you look at movies and so forth as how the Europeans picture some of outer space, it's always some monstrous type person, right? Well, consider this: what do you think that's putting in, in our kids, in our children's heart? 
see, that these are monstrous type beings, right? So if they do mount up in the space, and if they do find anybody, what you think they're going up there for? To make peace? They're going up there to kill everything uh, uh, they can. Like uh, like, mm -hmm. like, like, like uh, Satan said in Isaiah, uh, uh, the prophet as Satan in Isaiah 14, mm -hmm. say, how are you fall, fall from mm -hmm. heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Mm -hmm. How are you cast down to the ground who did weaken the nation? For you have said in your heart, I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to ascend in heaven. Where well, you can see, this is what he got his people doing. Don't he tell them in the church, say, we're going off to heaven? But it's not, written in, it's not written in the place in the scripture. So we can very well see that what's really going on is this. Satan is stirring up the masses of man so that the masses of man would not only destroy us. See, this is why uh, the federal government is, has classified us as a terrorist group, man. I don't even want a gun, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't yeah. even want to own a gun. I don't even like my kid to have play, you know, those little cat pistols yeah. and things, you know. Yeah. But yet and still, when they watch our dirty lighting on worldwide TV, and then uh, people come over here and don't associate with us, man. They they miss a rich part. I mean, when, when they find some Hebrews that know what to deal with, they miss a rich part of mm -hmm. our culture. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, was, it was like it was uh, back during, uh, before World War II. We gave the world a great legacy. They called them Negro spirituals, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. see. And they're still alive today. Of course, uh, uh, the Christians have tried to uh, squash them simply because those songs talked about songs of deliverance of going back home to Israel. Mm -hmm. So what the Europeans came up with was, well, that ain't gonna happen. God lied. He told all the prophets lies. You ain't gonna deliver y'all. All of us are going off to heaven, see. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand that as long as one of us mm -hmm. Know the truth. Mm -hmm. The Europeans have a problem. Truth cast to the ground will rise again. Right. So this is the reason why, and when you read in Revelation 12, when Satan is cast out of heaven, he went to make war with the people who brought forth the man, man child. Because see, we know what the deal is. We know that the nation worship gods of wood and stone. Mm -hmm. We know that the nation worship gods that they, they've heaped to themselves. And you can look at it. The Europeans named the days of the week. Mm -hmm. right. All of them named the pagan gods. Right, right. They gave us that zodiac, right? All of those are pagan gods, right? They gave us Sunday, Christmas, and Easter, Valentine's Day. Uh, what's that other one? Thanksgiving Day. Happy birthday. Right. And then uh, New Year's, ja the worship of Janus, the two-faced right. God that looks into right. the past and to the future. Yeah. They still got all of their paganism right here with us today. And we are going off into these things simply because of what Yahweh told us we was going to do while we were in this captivity. See, they aren't forcing us to do this. We're doing this because of the curses that's upon our people. And well, you know, speaking about peace, and, and speaking about the law, the law keep things peaceful. Of course. Well, you abide therein. Of course. Of course. You go any obeying, the, like you say, obeying the laws of the land. Or, or and, and, and likewise, when uh, you talked about the priests having to go back in there to show the people how to operate, the, mm -hmm. you know, operate in the land, mm -hmm. they had to do it lawfully. Right. Otherwise, they got the lions over. Right. In any city that you go in, as long as you abide by the rules right. and regulation that governs that specific city or that state, whatever, then you're going to be okay. But when you violate that law, then they're going to pick you up, put you in jail, or charge you a fine or something, right? right? But they're going to tell me, say, well, uh, see, y'all don't have any law. All you got to do is have belief. You know what I mean? Faith without works is no good. You see, but Yahweh told us the thing that was going to uh, 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 was going to happen to uh, to our people, brother. Let me read something to you here out of the book of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. This is Deuteronomy chapter four and uh, verse fifteen. I'm gonna start. This is verse fifteen. Moses told our people, say, take heed. Therefore, take therefore good heed unto yourselves, for you saw no man of similitude mm -hmm. on the day that Yahweh spoke unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Mm -hmm. They got men on crosses and everything today, mm -hmm. right? right? Okay, got little angels flying around with wings on the back, right? All that junk, right? Verse 16. Least you corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, mm -hmm. the similitude of, of the figure of any of the likeness of male or female, the likeness of, of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath. And least you lift up your eyes unto heaven, and when you see the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven should be driven to worship and serve them which the Lord your God. 
God have divided unto all the other nations upon the earth. Right. This is why the nations are often in paganism because Yahweh gave them up to that. But what he did, he appeared to us and told our people, said, don't you make no sim similitude, uh, nothing to represent me, right? But then hmm. we have our problems too because we got, we got uh, uh, just like the Christians have their symbol, the, the Muslims have their symbol. We got some Hebrew brothers that have a symbol too, a six-point star. Menorahs. Right. right. Because, well, most of the Esau uses the menorah uh, mm. nowadays. But basically what we use is that six-point star. Mm. We say this is the star of David, right? Mm. The star that was supposed to rise out of, Israel, out of Jacob was the Messiah. Right. He wasn't a six-point brother, right. you know what I mean? Right. But what it shows is this, that we've getting, gotten off into a bunch of paganism simply because we are following what the nations are doing. Mm -hmm. You see, and this is why Yahweh said and he's going to visit to us. So, right? Of course. And we prefer, because we, we want to be reckoned among the nations, just like when uh, when Israel wanted a king. Mm -hmm. They said, we, we want a king. Yeah. We want somebody to go before us, just like the nations had somebody to go before it. Right. And like and, and like mm -hmm. Yahweh told Samuel, said, Samuel, do what they say. Right. Give them a king, but tell them what kind of man is going to rule over them, right? right? right. So it's not you that they're rejecting, Samuel, see? Uh, uh, they could see Samuel, right. you see. So it's right. not you they're rejecting. They're rejecting me. Right. Simply because our people want to get off into that paganism of the other nations. See, we like to follow Mike. Mm. See, we like whatever master do, we like to do it, you see. And this is based on what uh, Yahweh told us not to do. But he told us why we... Let me read something else to you out of Jeremiah here. Jeremiah chapter 16. Okay. And I'm going to pick this up at, at, at verse 13 now. Yahweh told us if we didn't keep his law, he's going to cast us out that land, right? Okay. This is Jeremiah 16 and verse 13. He says... Uh, Therefore will I cast you out of this land into a land that neither you, neither your fathers have known. And there shall you serve other gods day and night, where I will show you no favor. Mm. Therefore, behold, the days come, said the Lord, that it shall no more be said that the Lord liveth to brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of the north and from the lands where he had driven them, and I will bring them again unto their land that I have given them. Now, uh, uh, o over here a little further, in, uh, in, in verse uh, same chapter, Jeremiah 16 and verse uh, uh, 19, he said, mm -hmm. O Yahweh, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, mm -hmm. the Europeans shall come unto you from the end of the earth and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Shall a man make gods to himself that are no gods? Mm -hmm. You see? Lies, vanity, and things. And these are is no profit, brother. What? Okay. Yahweh told us, and look, your law is going to, this, my, my law is my ways. It's going to make you holy. It's your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding among all the nations, right? Yeah. He said, if you keep my law, the nation's going to come on, you're going to rule the earth. And the nation's going to come unto you and say, what people is there so great with mm -hmm. the law, statute, and judgment so just? as these people here have, but see, we don't want to deal with that. No, we want to do, we want to be entertained. We'll be right back. We're going to the Round World Report. See you right back. Greetings, this is Brother Max Gilbert Israel with the Around the World News Report. Tonight we have Ruth Israel back in the studio with us tonight. Glad to see that you're back in the studio, Ruth. Thanks, Matthew. At the top of the news tonight, Yahweh continues to do His will. In this Turkey, the death toll there is 452 people in addition to 2,386 people being injured after an earthquake there measured 7.2 on the Richter scale. Washington has sent a rescue team and shelters for 2,000 homeless quake victims, as well as making available $1 billion in loans to help Turkish businessmen to finance reconstruction, says President Clinton. Showing love of thy neighbor as thyself. In a joint news conference with Turkish President Suleyman Demirel, President Clinton was reported as saying he endorses Turkey's long stand long-standing aims to join the European Union and he expects the EU to focus the proper perspective on the matter. In Moscow, 
a new Russian Jewish group founded. The organization was formed to aim at helping local Jewish institutions such as schools and community and excuse me and community centers. Spokesman for the Federation of Jewish Communities, Broach Gowin, says the group will sponsor a legal fund to counter anti Semitism. The group seems to have sprung up after the after some members of the Parliamentarian anti-Semitic, made anti-Semitic comments, which can be illegal under Russian law. Also in the news, Jerusalem. The Israelis and the Palestinians are facing yet again troubles concerning land in the West Bank. It seems as though the Israeli-Palestinian summit did not settle the question on which 5% of the West Bank of Israel would be transferred to Palestinian rule. Israel's Prime Minister Ehud Barak and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat failed to reach an agreement during an unscheduled meeting on yesterday. Israeli officials say the Palestinians want more populated, populated centers to be included. They have demanded the inclusion of areas with, with a larger Palestinian population. It was reported that Mr. Yasser Arafat did not sign the redeployment maps as presently drawn up. The Palestinians are expecting full or partial control of 39% of the West Bank by the beginning of, two, of the year 2000. Coming up later in the Round the World Report, China and the daughter of Babylon strikes a deal, or should one say, in an agreement. Now here's the community update with Ruth Yisrael. Thanks, man. is lifting African Americans to unprecedented levels in the areas of employment and income. But blacks are still lagging behind whites in obtaining access to health care, educational benefits, and incarceration rates. The study also concludes there is a decrease in black out of wedlock births and a rise in black high school completion rates, indicating the black community has taken a more active role in improving their overall future. In time, everything will improve for our captivity in this country is coming to a close. In Mississippi, three white men were found guilty of killing a black sharecropper who was beaten by a mob and dumped off a bridge nearly 30 years ago. The jury originally were deadlocked, but deliver deliberated another six hours re before returning a guilty verdict. The three men faced a maximum, maximum of 20 years in prison. What a small price to pay for murder. And turning to our health watch, new clues for the HIV virus. A short time after it invades the body, the virus that causes AIDS creates a reservoir of infection that cannot be stamped out by antiviral drugs and may resist vaccines. The study in the Science Journal sheds a new light on how quickly HIV is able to establish a chronic drug-resistant infection. And finally tonight, a look into the world of sports. Two mighty gladiators fought on Saturday night to win purses in excess of $15 million each. The fight was one that many found entertaining. But when viewing such athletic prowess as these two men displayed, we have to wonder when does it all end. With the continued rise of black violence, lack of educational and economic opportunities, and last but not least from whence we came, will we continue to allow our children as well as ourselves to view this barbaric, slave mentality, money-hungry industry as purely entertainment? If so, we may as well return to the field and pick cotton. I'm Ruth. And back to, his, uh, back to my skill. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. After six days of negotiations, <clears throat> the United States Trade Representative Charlene Barshevsky and China's Trade Minister Xi Jinping signed an agreement that would remove trade barriers, which was one of China's problems upon trying to enter into the World Trade Organization. President Bill Clinton was reported as saying the agreement will create unprecedented opportunities for American farmers, workers, and companies to compete successfully in China's market, while bringing increased prosperity to the people of China. 
This looks good for President Clinton following the U.S. aircraft bombing of the Chinese embassy in Belgrade back in May. This has been the Around the World News Report with Brother Maskell Ben Israel and the Community Update with Ruth Israel. Now back to the Sign of the Times with Daniel Ben Israel. Shalom. Welcome back to Signs of the Times. We're talking to the elder priest of the New Covenant Congregation of Israel, Yaakov Ben Israel. And this is our Ask the Elder segment where we give you, the audience, an opportunity to give us a call, to give the elder a call to uh, inquire of his uh, knowledge and understanding about the things that we're talking about tonight. Tonight we're talking about the new millennium. So uh, welcome your phone calls at 770-559-2999. That's 770-559. Five five nine two nine nine nine. Elder, before we go into the break, I was going to ask you a question. After you read Jeremiah sixteen, you said lies, vanities, and things wherein there is no profit. Mm -hmm. What equates to the biggest lie that has been given to us as a nation of people by the by the uh, by the other nations or the nations that's in power? The two biggest lies I know of, brother, is. That the, the first lie is that the Israelis are the children of Israel. Mm. Now that's the first lie, because the Bible tells you they was black. Okay. And the next biggest lie they tell, and all the religions talk about this, is that they're going off to heaven. And it's not mentioned any place in the Bible where you going off to heaven any place. The Messiah, but it's all through the prophets that the Messiah is going to come and save his people out of captivity and set up a kingdom on this earth. See, and people know how they've treated mm -hmm. us. Now, all the nations has had us in captivity. Right. This is why Yahweh got something against them. Mm -hmm. He said, whosoever touch you, touch the apple of my eye. I'm going to recompense it to you. Uh, as far as America is concerned, the daughter of Babylon, he said, I gave my people into you into your hand, and upon the very ancient have you very heavily laid the yoke. I mean, we've seen some of the things that happened during, uh, during, during that slave trade and so mm -hmm. forth. As a matter of fact, fact, we've seen some of the atrocities that happen even today. Mm -hmm. but, so we can very well see that uh, Yahweh is going to recompense the nations for what they have done to, uh, uh, to his people. He has to. So if you're not going to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, we probably lost... Ten viewers, because you said we're not going to heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if we're not going to heaven, where are we going? We're going back to the land of Israel. We're going to live in the land that was given to our father Abraham. Uh, we were given the land by covenant. By covenant, by blood covenant, we were given the land from the River Nile to the great river Euphrates, okay. the whole fertile crescent, which encompassed Eden and the garden that was east in Eden. All of that was God's land that he gave it to. He brought us out of Eden. He raised, we were the last nation on the earth. And he, he just didn't deal with the other nation. And he raised us up. And he set us in that land as his as his representatives on the earth. And then, well, go to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Weren't everybody who went to, and talked about the word of God to other people weren't the Hebrew Israelites? Mm -hmm. But today, what we get is that we get a pope that's saying, "Well, I'm a direct successor of Saint Peter." Mm -hmm. Christ says, "Salvation is of the Jews, not the Christians." Mm. You see, so. What, what, what we see is this. We begin to see that what man has done was take, to taken the legacy that our fathers wrote, and because we were uh, miseducated, what they did was they fed it back to us in verses and phrases, and now all of the, conference, the conferences that are set up are set up by Europeans. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, most of the conferences that are, are the religious uh, denominations that we practice today are less than 500 years old. A lot of people don't care. Right. See, they don't care. Right. They say, well, okay, so the new kids on the block, so what? You know, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the same reason why we were brought over here as slaves, because of what they want, the people wanted to do instead of following the word. Well, you know, Adam, when we have you on the program, we get the phones lit up, and uh, I believe we got some call, callers on the phone now. So, uh, caller, go ahead and state your name, please. Hey, 
Shalom. This brother da uh, Dawid. Shalom, Shalom brother. All right. Um, Elder, I, I also read that article that you spoke about earlier that was uh, on, on the, uh, from the FBI, mm -hmm. and I found it pretty interesting that they would classify a group of people as terrorists and in their own report say that they've displayed absolutely nothing, no uh, violence or anything that would make them think that they would do anything in the future mm -hmm. to cause any problems, mm -hmm. but yet still they were classified as terrorists. Mm -hmm. But my question to you is, when you, when you say, I've heard you say many times that we are captives, mm -hmm. um, is it an element of our captivity that the same government that never wanted to give us any rights is now using their same power to say that we are now terrorists, and knowing how powerless we are? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of course it is, my brother. That's the reason. Appreciate your call. That, that's what they're doing, see, is, well, America washes our dirty linen on worldwide TV. We all know that. Mm -hmm. And what she's doing now is she's trying to stir up all of the other religious factions and different other uh, nation of people are further against us by saying, well, these black folks here, you got to watch them. Because, see, they're preparing to do this, and they're preparing to do that. Well, I'm trying to, I'm preparing to receive my salvation. I ain't right. thinking about, you know, if folks want to fight, then let them go and fight, you know. Right. But uh, uh, the thing of it is, is they are, uh, the reason why they're doing all of this is just to uh, make us, make our people look bad, especially the Hebrews, mm -hmm. make us look bad in front of all the nation because let me tell you something anybody who read this Bible here know that the Hebrews were represented in heaven when you go in Revelations 12 chapter it was a woman in heaven that was clothed with the sun the moon of her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head and her head and she was in she was in she she was she was uh, she was uh, 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 she had conceived mm -hmm. and she was ready to bring forth the man child that was going to rule all nations right and that's who Satan went to make war with mm -hmm. was 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 that faction of it and truly so you can very well see what's going on is this the nations are just planting, planting everything uh, 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 that they can. They aim to write it us so when the century do come about and man start getting his governments in place, we haven't got a government, uh, uh, a governmental system for them to deal with, then we can very well see that we're on the way out. Well, you know, in, in the Brother Ballot, the, 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 the thing in the report saying that there's no uh, record of them being, you know, Israel being uh, violent or anything like that, but being a deal with two extremes. Right. So it, they really just kind of say, well, the mainstream is real peaceful people and do the things that that need to uh, that need for them to do uh, in terms of maintaining some kind of peace. Well, what really happened? You have to go back into the past of these various groups and see why they have the grounds. Uh, why the, why the uh, the federal government is saying the things about some of the, some of the Hebrew groups that they are. Like you said, they're two extremes. Right. One was accused of racketeering, mm -hmm. right? right? Rico, like Convicting. Mm -hmm. of, of racketeering, mm -hmm. right? And uh, because all of these things was proven. Then the other one, they had uh, 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 had some uh, criminal activity that was going on with that group. You see, so we can very well see that the government has something uh, against those groups. But see, that has nothing to do with the thousands of Hebrew Israelite groups that's in the other groups that's in this country. Because what we're trying to do is this: we're trying to live peaceably in the land. Right. You see, because don't nobody want the trouble, but we know it's going to come simply because the Messiah said there's going to come a time when whosoever killed you would think he did Yahweh a favor. Right, right. And when you look at the state of our people today, when you look at the state of our people, brother, we're in bad shape. Right. We're in really bad shape. We got three calls on hold. Let's go to this first one. Sister Nairi, go ahead. Hi, I was uh, just thumbing through the channels and I stopped by and I was listening to what you two were saying. and. I was just wondering how, since there's so many uh, different denominations of religion, I was just wondering how does one be sure that your particular um, interpretation of the Bible is the truth? Okay, thank you for your call. Let you. me, let me, and my sister, let me read something to you that the Messiah had to say himself, and maybe you will. Uh, 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 you'll understand why we practice uh, uh, the way the things that we that we practice. This is in uh, Saint. If you got your book, turn it to Saint John chapter four, 
and I'm going to read something to you out of that. St. John chapter 4, and I'm going to start this at verse, uh, uh, verse, uh, well, I'm, I'm, well, I'm going to read uh, uh, verse, uh, I'm going to start at verse 19. But what you do is start reading at, uh, uh, the Messiah had went to a well, and he was sitting down on a well, and a woman came up to him, and he asked her, say, give me the drink. And uh, 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 then his, his apostles were very surprised that he even talked to the woman about giving him a, a drink. And it came up a discussion about uh, where the people worship at. And let me read something to you that the Messiah, that the woman said and what the Messiah himself said. This is in uh, St. John 4 and verse 19. The woman said unto him, Sirs, I perceive that you are prophets. Our fathers worship in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Mm. Then Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour comes when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You don't know what you worship. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Mm -hmm. The people that went and taught the word were Jews. They were called Christians by the same people that called us a bunch of other church names today. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you keep on, if you read in the book of Acts, Paul even said that he was a Jew of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. Now let me read something else to you here, my sister. This is in the book of Zechariah. Uh, if I can find Zechariah, I'm in, I'm in mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I have to go back here to find Zechariah. You know? mm -hmm. uh, this is in the prophet Zechariah. Let me read something to you that Zechariah had to say uh, pertaining to the millennia period. It says, uh, 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 I'm going to pick this up at uh, Zechariah uh, 8 and verse 20. You read the whole chapter. It's about the, the house that's going to be, uh, when the Messiah, what's going to happen when the Messiah come, uh, come and set up his kingdom. But I'm going to pick this up at Zechariah 8 and verse 20. It says, Thus said Yahweh of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people, and the inhabitants of many cities, and the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yahweh of hosts. I will go also. Mm -hmm. Yes, many people and strong nations shall come to seek Yahweh Yahweh of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nation, shall even take hold to a skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Christ was king of the Jews. Mm. When he was born, the, uh, uh, the people came and had the, the three travelers, the brothers that had returned back to Jerusalem because they saw a star. They came and said, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. when, when a Herod, when Pilate asked him, say, are you the king of the Jews? He said, you said it. Mm -hmm. See, but my kingdom is not of this earth. He said, to this end was I born. Mm -hmm. You see, but and then uh, uh, when we go in the New Testament, read in the New Testament. Let, let me show. Let me show you what I mean. This is in Romans 11, chapter Romans 11, and I'm going to pick this up at Romans 11 and verse 26. Paul said, "And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, they shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn ungodliness away from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sin. As concerning the gospels, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election." They are beloved for the Father's sake, mm -hmm. for the gift and calling of, 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 of God are without repentance. He can't change from these things simply because these were covenants that he made with our fathers. And the things that, are, that we talk about, my dear, it, they, these things are not my interpretation. What we do is this. We read the Word. And you got education. I'm quite sure you understood what that said. Speaking of the Word, let's uh, let people know where they, we can uh, be reached. We're at uh, 3901 A Covington Highway. That's Decatur, Georgia. The telephone, and that's Decatur 30032. The telephone number is 404-286-5869. Also, there's a website located at www.thenccci.com. Eric, I see we have you on hold, so Eric, go ahead. Yes, Elva, how you all doing? Oh, fine, how you doing? Okay, uh, I've been trying to talk to a lot of Christians and a lot of Europeans, too. Uh, and no one still can tell me where the real Jesus come from. They said, what about Yahweh? I should, yes, sure. 
uh, it's still a new daughter. Oh, well, where did Jesus come from? Mm -hmm. I want to know where the world from. So some, somebody ain't telling me something right. Hmm. I need to know the truth. Thank you for your call. Well, you have to understand when you're dealing with that, my brother, you have to understand that the English language is, is less than 500 years old. And they added the J and the U to the English language. There was no way that you could have said Jesus back in the days when the brother walked the earth. His name was Yahshua, which means Yahweh's salvation. Mm -hmm. They called him, uh, he never was called Emmanuel, right? That means God is with us, right? So what they called him, what they named him was this. Yahweh's salvation, and that's what he was. He, he came, and he came to redeem those that was under the First Testament, and in, in the process of redeeming us, he gave us the spirit for us to go out and teach the world. But the world invaded our city and put us in captivity simply because Yahweh was kicking us out of the land because of what our fathers did. Mm -hmm. But see, the world, he, used, he did what he always has done. He used the other nations as a strap. Right. But he told us while we in our, our enemy's land that we, you know, no, you seek to me. You seek to the things that are right, and I'm going to save you. Uh, 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 let me read something to you out of uh, uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter 30, uh, chapter 34. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pick this up at verse 24, okay. 22 rather. He says, Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my servant David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Yahweh, will be their Elohim, and my servant David, a prince among them. Uh, uh, I, Yahweh, have spoken it. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the wood. And I will make them and the place around my hill a blessing, and it shall and it and I will cause showers of blessings to come down in this season. There shall be showers of blessings. Mm -hmm. So we can very well see that what the nations is talking about and what the Bible is actually saying is two different things. Mm -hmm. What man has managed to do is this. Man gave us a new God. Call him Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. He gave us a new God. Mm -hmm. The brother's name was Yahshua. Okay. Now, when you deal with Jesus, you don't have to keep God's law. Mm. And you got in it. Right. When you deal with Yahshua, a rich young ruler came. Yahshua was well, perfect. He said, be you followers of me. Mm -hmm. A rich young ruler came to him and said, Lord, what do I have to do to inherit eternal mm -hmm. life? He said, you know the commandments, keep it. Right. He said, which? He named five of the commandments that deal with man dealing with mm -hmm. man, right? right? Well, right. a man knew he had to love God, right. right? So he dealt with the five commandments of man dealing with man, right? Mm -hmm. He said, all of these have I done for my youth. He said, well, okay, go sell what you have and come and follow me. And the young, young man couldn't do that because he couldn't go beyond the law because he had great possession. So what we see is this. We see that when the Europeans came on the scene with that Christianity, that Christianity junk brother, what they did was this. They gave us a different God. They gave us a different set of holidays to keep. Nothing that they do is written in this book here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yet still they're going to tell me, say, well, we're serving God. I speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. And they start talk, talking that jibber-jabber in the churches and edify because don't nobody know what's saying. Everybody seems to be mad. Right. Everybody's crazy. Let's, right. Let's go back to the phone. We've got Joseph on the phone. Joseph, go ahead, sir. Hi. How are you all tonight? Well, Very well, sir. Great. I, maybe, it, maybe you dealt with it on another show before, but, and I just never heard it, but I just wanted to know, how do you... I know the Christians view Jesus as... <laughs> We're getting some feedback. Uh, Joseph, let me ask if you can turn your television down. We're getting some feedback here in the studio. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. My, my question is, how do you view Jesus? I know the Christians view Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. Savior. Okay. Muslims view Jesus as just simply a prophet of God. I just want to know, how do you view Jesus? Okay. Thank you for the call, sir. Well, I view Jesus as a pagan God, but I, I view the Son of God, Yahshua, that was born to the Virgin Mary, uh, I view him as the one that came to redeem the children of Israel. Now, and to show you that he came to redeem the children of Israel, see, Israel had to be our uh, saved first. And then after Israel was saved, then the rest of the nations could be saved. Let me read you something uh, uh, out of uh, uh, St. Matthew chapter uh, 15. We got about a minute and a half. Okay, it says... Uh, 
Then Yahshua went, then, went from there and departed in the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came up out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O, o Adonai, you son of David. My daughter is grievous to vex with the devil. But he didn't answer a word. But he answered and said unto her, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. See, all this is tied over with the Passover lamb and the uh, the atonement sacrifice and all of the blood sacrifice. See, that wasn't no good no more because our people used that as, as a crutch. Right. So, uh, seeing that Yahweh has said blood for blood, we needed a human sacrifice. This is why he came unto his own. Mm -hmm. You see, but and his own didn't. A lot of his own didn't receive. A lot of people say, "Well, see, Paul said, well, we go into the Jews.' Now, now, Paul didn't have nothing to do with what Peter was doing, right? Because Peter was one to give uh, the keys to the kingdom. Paul was sent to the Europeans, and everybody want to tell me what Paul had to say to the Europeans. I said, "Well, what did Paul have to say about Israel?" Right. Paul said in Romans our eleventh chapter, and so it is written, "All Israel shall be saved. There shall come a deliverer out of Zion that shall turn ungodly." And it's a way from Jacob. And this is what's happening all over the country, brother. Uh, uh, there are brothers that's out here that got camps going, that's gathering the flock, that's teaching the flock uh, that they got to walk in Yahweh's righteous ways in order to receive that spirit, because that spirit is going to be the only thing that's going to protect us in the calamities that's getting ready to come up on the earth. Well, with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and let our viewers know where we can be located at 3901 A Covington Highway, that's Decatur, Georgia, 30032. There's also a telephone number, 404-286-5869. There's someone manning that phone right at...